We're drilling right now and we're going for it. This is a right now story. We're gonna have a lot of news flow coming up. The size potential here is just staggering when you're talking about a, a district scale opportunity. We want to have something that makes a dent in the global market. Sterling Metals Corp. is a client and sponsor of PinnacleDigest.com, whose parent company owns shares and warrants of Sterling Metals Corp. Please read the full disclosure at the end of this video. I've traveled to the easternmost province of Canada, to the Atlantic Ocean and beautiful St. John's, Newfoundland, to learn about a silver and base metals exploration project its owner believes has district scale potential. After many years of underinvestment, Newfoundland and Labrador is seeing a substantive uptick in investment, employment, and tax revenue from the mining and exploration industries. And following the discoveries of newfound gold, which saw its market cap peak at roughly $2 billion in 2021, the rock has captured the attention of speculators across Canada. Although lesser known for its mining history than other regions of the country, such as Yukon, Quebec, and Ontario, Newfoundland and Labrador should not be overlooked. Its mineral wealth has been known about for nearly 200 years. Despite its long mining history, industry experts believe Newfoundland has enormous untapped resource potential. And over a dozen mineral commodities have been produced within Newfoundland and Labrador over the past 150 years. Nestled in the wilds of one of Canada's more underexplored regions, the Great Northern Peninsula of Newfoundland, early stage junior explorer Sterling Metals hopes to identify the next high grade silver district. With drillers on site, the company has embarked on a drilling campaign at its Sail Pond project. In the middle of a pivotal season for the young company, we'll be joining its CEO to see where things stand and where he intends to lead Sterling. Let's go talk rocks with Matthew Wilson. Matt, it's great to be with you in this stunning part of our country. Sterling Metals just raised almost $5 million. You're back drilling this season. You're going 24 hours a day. They're just doing a shift change. What's so compelling about the Sail Pond project right now as it stands? It's six things, right? Look for kind of this checklist when you, when you see a junior project. You want high grades, which we've got, and you want uh, that size potential. You want to have something that makes a dent in the global market. That's how, that's how you get those huge returns. And then you need to reduce the risk. And to reduce the risk, you need a good team that's raised money, that knows how to ex uh, execute on a program, which we've done, and we have, and then you need a safe jurisdiction, someone that's not gonna take your project away or that's gonna, that's, uh, gonna mess with what you're doing. You also need good infrastructure and access. And I mean, we're on this road right now, the drill's right there. This yeah. is a, a pretty good place to be. Yeah, I'll say we came off a paved road right to this. It's like almost no four by four required. And you don't just have silver, do you? What are the other minerals you're going after? So we have a plethora of things that we get yeah. to talk about uh, in this project. So we have silver, which yeah. makes up probably about 40% of the value of all the holes that we're dealing with. And then you have copper, yeah. zinc, lead, antimony. So you've hit some high grade stuff. What is the drill program designed to achieve this season, 2022? So once you make the discovery, uh, you gotta build on the discovery, right? And so what's so special about this project is how big it is. The surface expression goes from the bottom of it, which is pretty close to where we're standing right now, to the top, which is uh, over 12 kilometers away. And you see the same high grades of silver, copper, lead, zinc, and antimony from bottom to top. So while it's great to be able to find one uh, one area to be able to find several areas is even better. And the way I think about this is a string of pearls, whereby you have several deposits along this 12 kilometer strike length. The analogy that was made within our technical report was done by this Dr. Stephen Piercy, and his analogy was the Kino Hill District or the Coeur d'Alene District. And these are hundreds of millions or billions of ounces of silver. That's what it looks like. It looks like a string of pearls along there. And in the Kino Hill District, which we kind of show, there's this 12 kilometer trend line. There's nine deposits, nine pearls and each of them are ever anywhere from 250,000 tons to 3 million tons, so not very big, and carry 10 million ounces to 100 million ounces of silver. So we're looking for these really tightly packed, dense area 
of high grade mineralization where these kind of veins that are anywhere from this to, uh, you know, I guess me. Yeah. <laughs> that can, they all kind of come together. It's high grade, these high grade sulfides and they make a, a pod. So the point of this drill program is to, is to kind of show that we know what we're doing on, on the first pearl, which, which we think is right here. And then to do it again and again, because that's when you start to see the size potential of this project. Let's talk about Sterling Metals' approach to selecting drill targets. Because we were talking about that earlier. Uh, I think it'd be cool if you shared it. Yeah, so I really believe in diversity of thought. I think that, you know, everyone brings such an incredible range of expertise. You know, mm -hmm. the person that I've done this for the longest with, Kelly Malcolm, who's been a technical advisor for us. He's VPX of Amex. He's found, you know, the, some of the, the best hits in Canada over the last couple of years running that program. He was at Detour Gold for five years. Then another technical advisor, Jeremy Niemi, right? He's been 30 years in the business. He has experience with Kinross and Inco and, you know, doing nickel and the Ring of Fire. And then we have PhDs from SRK, who are mm -hmm. structural geologists. And so it seems foolish of me when you're dealing with something that's 300 meters under the ground, a CN Tower under the ground, 500 yeah. meters, and, yeah. you know, Lake Ontario to the 401 in terms of the length of what you're trying to prove, to rely on one person. All right, Matt, so we've come over to the marble mine that's also on your project. Can you tell us about the history of that and how relevant is it? Yeah, well, it's always good in a prospective mining project to have a big hole in the ground on your project. And uh, this was a mine in the 80s. Uh, it had private investors. There was about three, four years of production, a couple million pounds of marble, really high purity stuff. And it just, it shows, you know, there's road accessibility, support from the community. It just really shows that you can have a mine here and it can work. So it's a, it's a great thing to have. So as we've discussed, Sterling owns 100% of the Sail Pond project. Uh, I understand you acquired that ahead of schedule. How did that come about? And is there an NSR attached to the project if it were, were to go into production? So we acquired the project from Altius in 2020, summer. Yeah. Kind of see them as a bit of a big brother on this project. Yeah. They owned 19.9% of the project at the time. And the deal we did was for that kind of just below 20% ownership in the company. And then it also involved, we needed to raise $2 million and we needed to spend $2 million. So we've done both those things, raising 12 million since then and, uh, and spending uh, about four or five. Mm -hmm. And then there is a royalty attached. Uh, Tony Kearney, who discovered the project then in 2016, he holds a one and a half percent royalty and then Altius has a half percent and they can buy a one percent, one of his, one percent from him for a million bucks. As we know, there's always things that can go wrong in any mining venture. What is something, what is a potential, you know, flaw or event that could, you know, stop this project from moving forward? I would say that um, this is a carbonate hosted system. There's not a lot of these that people chase after in the world when they work. The Kino Hill example is great, 300 million ounces. The Coeur d'Alene example, billion and a half ounces. Um, they're complicated. There's folding, there's faulting, there's issues that kind of go with that. And so finding these dense packets of high grade mineralization is kind of, you know, drilling CN Tower under the ground. So yeah. you need to find that. And so the, the real risk is that we, we have this huge land, we can't find exactly where those pods are. Let's talk money and capital. Um, you guys just raised nearly five million bucks. At the end of this program, how much cash will the company be, be left with? Yeah, so we've been fortunate enough to have great shareholders who, uh, who put money into the deal. We yeah. started the year with about seven million after yeah. the raise we did. And the plan here is three, four million dollars of spending. So you're gonna have somewhere between three and four million at the exit of this program as we go into winter. So uh, it's nice to be de-risked and not have to deal with the, uh, the markets right now. Let's fast forward six to 18 months from now. What does success look like in your mind for Sterling Metals? This year is really about that rinse, wash, repeat. That string of pearls, that yeah. size potential. We know we have grade, it's on surface from bottom mm -hmm. to top. We've drilled it, we know that it's in there. It's not necessarily about creating a resource or finding a deposit. Yeah. It's about showing how big this project can really be. So six months from now, I hope that we've done that. We've shown that in a couple different places, we understand what's happening. And then 18 months from now would be to elaborate on those spots, right? It would be to make sure that you go from a zone to a deposit, to possibly talk about resources, to talk about those things. And so the six month is to show that size potential and that yeah. we know what we're doing. And the 18 month is sort of to elaborate on that. Lastly, there's hundreds of junior miners spread across Canada. They're all drilling and hoping to find the next big thing. Why Sterling Metals? Why now? I think that we have the grade and the size potential here is just staggering when you're talking about a, a, a district scale opportunity. We're in a jurisdiction that's completely wonderful. Uh, we have a standing beside the mine that yeah. used to be in production and infrastructure is great. 
and we're drilling right now and we're going for it. And so this is a right now story where yeah. we're gonna have a lot of news flow coming up. Uh, thanks for joining me, best of luck. That was great, thanks a lot for having me. In this inflationary environment, many investors are once again looking at precious metals and natural resource opportunities. Located in Newfoundland, Sterling Metals aims to advance its silver and base metals exploration project by completing its second ever drill campaign at Sail Pond. After showing the project has the potential to host a significant mineral deposit with its initial drill campaign last year, the company has identified more than 30 priority drill targets along a 12 kilometer corridor. When drill results are released, the company hopes to paint a clearer picture as to why it believes the Sail Pond project has district scale potential. Like this video and subscribe to never miss another adventure.